Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and today we're down here in the shop. And um, if you've been following the channel at all, you know that I've been doing some work lately with smoothboard flintlocks. And what I've been trying to find out is uh, how accurate they are, how effective they were as, a, as an individual fighting tool. If they are loaded with uh, appropriate 18th century techniques. In other words, not the way we load them today. Today we tend to load them with patched round balls and 3FG powder and small charges and um, you know we're shooting them in, in matches, right? But back in the day they loaded them quite differently. So I did a video on civilian guns using my Fusil de Chasse, a 20 gauge gun, and loading with bare ball and a wad on top and a heavy powder charge. So I got quite a few comments from people asking me to do something similar with military guns. Uh, so I went out and I picked up a Pedersoli Brown Bess musket. And uh, I haven't had one of these for probably 15 years. And back then I didn't shoot it appropriately. Back then I shot it with patch round balls the way most people do, right? But that's not how they shot it then. So what we're going to be doing with this is shooting it uh, the way they would have shot it in the 18th century. And, and that is with military paper cartridges. So, in order to do that, we've got to make up some paper cartridges. So, making these right, military-style paper cartridges, that's what this video is going to be all about. And in order to do it, I went to the Jefferson Arsenal, and I ordered one of their paper cartridge kits. Now, you can get these either with projectiles, 69 caliber balls, or without. And I got it without because I have no lack of 69 caliber round balls here. So uh, I got a kit for making 80 cartridges. And uh, let's take a look at what's in it. Let's see what comes in this kit. Alright. So we've got the forming dowel. I'm not sure what that is. We've got thread for tying off. We've got instructions. Those will be handy. And it looks like we've got a couple of uh, packages of cut paper. Or maybe it's just paper that needs to be cut. And, oops, it's stapled shut. All right. That was stapled shut. I'm not sure why. Probably to make sure I ruin this piece of paper. And let's see what we've got here. Just a piece of cardboard. All right, so that's what comes in the kit. Uh, ah, they are cut. Wonderful. Okay, so we have our paper pre-cut for us. I was wondering if I was going to have to cut paper up myself. And the answer to that is no. So I will assume that this also contains pre-cut paper. All right, so let me get set up and we'll make some paper cartridges. All right, before we start, there's a little bit we had to do. Uh, the threads come in hanks like that. There are two of them. And you have to cut them into individual six-inch pieces. This piece right here is a choking block. You're supposed to C-clamp it to the edge of your bench, and it should run down to your right. Now, on my bench, obviously, I couldn't C-clamp it. So, I've temporarily screwed it down. So, in order to make a cartridge, you take your pre-cut paper, right? And you position it so the wide end is at the top, short end is at the bottom, diagonal running up to your left. Take your former, right, with the end in it. I'm just going to kind of position it this way, make sure I've got enough space above my ball. We've got plenty of space below, so it's not, not really an issue. You can have as much above as you want. I think that, that looks about right to me. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to start wrapping the paper tightly around the former. 
Now when I've got about a turn in, like this, okay, what I'm going to do is I am going to press my finger in here. Alright, and I'm going to put the ball inside. Put the sprue up. Okay, I'm going to keep on rolling that. I got it turned so you can see it, but okay. So now what I've got, I'm try to square this around here. Okay, so what we got now is we've got the ball in there. We've got a cylinder, right? And by by putting that flap, you might wonder why you do that. It's actually it's pretty smart. Now this is the choke line, right? So I'm going to take a turn. I'll do it up here where you can see it better. I'm going to take a turn on the choke. Okay. And that gives me my good crump up at the top. Now, the beauty of folding that over is uh, on some methods of cartridge making I've seen, you have to tie a string under the ball, between the ball and the powder, as well as over the top of the ball, which I'm doing here. Otherwise, you get powder slipping around the paper and getting in with the ball, and it won't get into your main charge and burn efficiently. However, by folding off that flap of paper, you very effectively block the ball off from the powder charge. So the powder can't infiltrate into the ball's cavity. And you are good to go. Alright, so now we got the top tied. Just gonna snip it. Pull this out, and we're ready for powder, right? Alright, I've made up five. I'm going to make one more, kind of as an insurance one. Envelopes, and then I'm going to put powder in them. And, and I'm doing something kind of specific here. So, like I said, we fold, fold this in. Show you one more time. Put the ball in. Finish rolling it up. formed around here. All right, now I'm going to put the choke in it. Stretch. Put my finger in here while I'm choking this down. All right, now I'm going to take the thread. Tie this off. Now, I'm marking these with the letter P. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to put a full powder charge in here. And that includes the priming, because that's the way they did it in the 18th century. So, what I'm using is I'm using 2FG, and I'm not really using Elephant. This is actually Go-X, but I wanted an old metal can so I could use my screw lid. I'm going to load it with 124 grains of powder, which is the equivalent of the 18th century load using 18th century powder. And, and I've got that basically out of the British musketry manual. So, Jefferson Arsenal tells you to load 100 grains, but 100 grains is too light. So that's 15 grains basically for priming with some spillage. And 110 grains then for the actual firing cartridge. All right, now I'm going to fold the tail over. Right, and 
and here we go. Got my fully formed fully formed cartridge and the P tells me that that has the priming powder in it. Uh, I'm gonna make up a bunch later that won't be marked and they will only have the main charge because I think when you load, as, as I'll show you for demonstration purposes, when you load from uh, the cartridge, you have to prime first, then put the main charge down, then the ball down. That is a little bit dangerous in my view. So I'll do it for demonstration purposes, but for most of my shooting, I'm going to prime afterwards. Uh, so the cartridges I make up won't have the priming powder in them. But let's get these loaded up. Okay, I have done about 20 of these and I'm starting to get my technique down. It's like anything else, you gotta, you gotta play with it a bit and get it. I am making one change. So I'll show you what I'm doing. Taking paper, taking a glue stick, which is not part of the deal, but I'll tell you what, it helps you to get a tighter more secure cartridge so I've been doing this for a little while now but the same same deal I'm gonna put the dowel in I'm gonna wrap it one turn tuck in this end put a ball in it Finish wrapping it up. Seal the end down. Fold the crimp down inside. I take the choke string, put my finger in here. After I get the string wrapped around. Alright, so finger in it, choke string around it. And choker tight. And then tie it off with a string. Okay, here we go. Dowel's out. And a beautiful cartridge casing. And I find if I don't glue them, they tend to kind of open up a little bit. So we're ready to put the powder in, which is the same as we did before. All right, we got 25 cartridges loaded. So uh, next time you see me, I'll be out shooting these in the Petersoli Brown Bess. Well, down in the uh, description area, I'll have a link uh, to the Jefferson Arsenal so you can get a paper cartridge kit should you so desire. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up, like it. Uh, because that helps us get into the recommendations uh, in your queue. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Love to have you on board. And if you are a subscriber and you want to support us, you can do that on Patreon. And we'll have the links to that below as well. And just as the last thing, if you have not checked out MikeBellevue.com, my website... Uh, go on over there and check it out. There's a lot more content there. There are articles, there are pictures. Um, just a lot of black powder stuff for you to enjoy. And we've got our merchandise store, so you can get a t-shirt or a hoodie. It's getting a little bit chilly out, so those hoodies are good. And that's how we pay for all this stuff. So until next week, bye.